I am Carl Kent, uh, instructor for Paralegal 274. I am lecturing here on Chapter 3, Computers in the Law Office. If you miss a session, a uh, session in which we talk about Chapter 3, and you miss a lecture, you are required to listen to uh, this PowerPoint presentation, take notes, and then be prepared to answer questions, proving that you did listen to the lecture and have read the chapter. Chapter three deals with computers in the law office. And it is basically an introduction, introduction to computer hardware and software. Um, and the basic distinction being made in the book is computer hardware are the tangible, touchable, physical system parts of a computer system. So a mouse, um, the box in which the central processing unit their motherboard are residing in the internal hard drive, um, the monitor, uh, or the flat panel display. Those are aspects of computer hardware. Computer software is a different story. Uh, it has to do with the instructions to the hardware to perform certain functions. Those instructions are contained in programs of various kinds, and the um, Computer software is really a misnomer. The word software refers to an era in which when you wanted to program the hardware of a computer, you had punch cards. These were cards made of paper, and there were certain holes in those cards that were fed, a stack of them fed into the uh, computer hardware by a card reader, and this set the computer up to run the program. Uh, so that particular part of the computer system was called software, because the paper was soft, and the hardware that it instructed uh, was hard. A better name for software is thoughtware, because a computer uh, doesn't think, but the programmer who was given the job of instructing the mechanics of the computer uh, to do certain things uh, and display certain things on the screen or um, cause a printer to uh, put information on paper, etc. Um, that is the, the program that a programmer, a person wrote and puts into the computer usually with magnetic uh, material like a hard drive or a CD disk and so on. Um, so that's the difference between computer software and hardware. Hardware components include, uh, of course, a keyboard or a mouse, uh, could include a microphone, external, a video camera, output, um, hardware, printers, monitors, etc., uh, maybe a, vid uh, a video projector, processing unit, the CPU. The central processing unit is a big chip inside on the motherboard of the computer, and the faster that CPU is in terms of processing information, of course, the faster the computer will be. Computers um, will also be faster if the bus or the wiring on the motherboard is, instead of 32 pathways, 64 pathways. This is called a 64-bit computer. So there, and then also the hard drives, if the hard drive spins to get the data off of the um, drive uh, more quickly than another hard drive, then that, that computer will be faster. So there's a lot of um, aspects of a computer that determine how fast it will go. We'll be talking about that in our uh, uh, sessions. The power source, the electric battery, or an un un uninterruptible power supply, those are all parts of the hardware. Um, then also uh, permanent memory devices, a hard drive, a portable memory device, USB flash drives, memory cards, SD cards, CDs, DVDs, external devices outside the computer, input-output devices that require an adapter to connect to the computer like a scanner would be hardware. So the computer chip and memory module that perform basic uh, computer oper functions 
and random access memory, the memory that stores works in progress, and the uninterruptible power supply. What that is is if the power in your building goes off and you have your computer plugged into this battery really is what it is. It takes over and continues to feed um, power to the computer. Usually a laptop, of course, has got a battery already. Um, so as long as the battery's charged, if the power goes off, it doesn't affect the computer. But workstations do not have batteries. And so this is kind of like a battery for a workstation that will last for a while. And it prevents accidental loss in the, in the, in the, in the case of loss of power. Operating system software, uh, Microsoft Windows is an example, also Linux, um, the IBM uh, computer uses either one of those, but also there is an operating system for the Macintosh, iOS uh, for the Macintosh, and so it's a different kind of operating system. Uh, and these operating systems provide the basic instructions for starting up the computer and processing the basic input and output activity. Um, I might say this to you, and that is that the Apple computers, um, the Macintosh, can run two operating systems on one computer. So you, if you get a, an Apple um, MacBook Pro or a desktop Macintosh computer, Apple computer, you can install Windows as well as the Apple operating system, and you can do what is called dual booting. So when you uh, boot up the computer, you turn it on, you press an options key, and it lets you pick which of the operating systems, Windows or the Apple operating system, you want that computer to run. And there are other ways to run two operating systems at the same time using something called parallels. So if you have an Apple computer, you can still run all of the Windows software if you install the Windows operating system on your Apple computer. A lot of people don't know this and avoid buying an Apple computer because they want to use Windows software, but this is an option that the Apple Corporation has provided. So the purpose of Chapter 3 is to discuss the different types of computer systems in a law office, uh, describe the different computing computer operating systems, explain the differences between general applications and specialty application software. Also to understand the basic rules in installing, uh, installing uh, and operating software, understand how a network functions and the issues involved with network security. So uh, the purpose number one is to discuss the different types of computer systems in a law office. Uh, mainframe computers, we're not gonna really worry too much about those in our course because these are not used by um, most law firms, only the very uh, biggest law firms in the, in the country and in the world use these. Standalone computers, workstations uh, are typical, um, like a Dell or an HP, a Linux. These are all the types of workstations that you might be using um, in a, a particular law office. And these usually are uh, not standalone um, but they are connected to a network of computers. So there are file servers that, where you will store your information from the uh, uh, workstation, the computer you're using, to the network computer. And the reason this is done is because that server that where you store all your information in a law firm is going to be backed up. Whereas your local workstation, if you just save things on the hard drive there, that's not going to be backed up in most uh, law firms. <clears throat> Networks can connect many different offices and in this case you might um, have a, um, a worldwide network of uh, secured network. It doesn't use the internet but they use um, special operating systems to connect the various law offices throughout the world. And um, you also um, can connect your workstation to another workstation so you can share information directly from one workstation to another workstation without a file server. This is called a peer-to-peer -peer network. Some law firms operate in that way. Uh, the guts of the computer, the motherboard, the largest computer uh, component inside the computer, it's a printed circuit board. Um, the central processing unit is mounted on that board and it gets really, really hot 
therefore on top of the uh, central processing unit usually there's a heat sink uh, so that the heat from the central processing unit goes into that and on top of that there's a fan that blows uh, that heat up into the computer and then a fan in the back of the computer blows out the heat and so it's important when you're using a computer because they do get really hot is not to put like a space heater down if you have your computer on the floor like a workstation down there um, to, to get the air around the computer very hot it's going to slow the computer down because there is a thermostat that controls um, whether or not the computer is overheating and if the, if the thermostat uh, senses that the computer is getting too hot uh, because you've got a space heater nearby and where the fan breaks down in the computer then the central processing unit will be slowed down and that cools it uh, and then also if the fans completely go off inside of a computer uh, then the um, thermostat will actually shut the power off to the computer so it doesn't catch on fire uh, desktop computer desktop desktop computers are designed to allow the users to add components such as additional memory modules the more ram or memory modules you have in your computer generally the faster it will be uh, portable computer systems include of course laptops and tablets and now increasingly smartphones are being used um, uh, and so on in law firm uh, mobile devices like smartphones are really computers in a little tiny um, uh, package so that you can run a lot of software that you run on regular computers on your smartphones nowadays you can do word processing spreadsheets etc etc and a lot of times the attorneys want to plug their smartphones or their uh, iPads or uh, their smart uh, tablets into a projector and show what is on the phone uh, like a presentation on a, a screen uh, and so there are adapters that allow you to plug these smartphones and iPads into uh, projectors and we'll be talking about those as well uh, software is coded or co that is coded instructions programs to the computer hardware for internal operations and to prefer, perform specific tasks uh, I prefer again to call software thoughtware because the programmer is thought through um, when you press a particular key what the computer should do and the program is put into the central processing unit and it awaits your instructions but the computer's not thinking it is the thought of the programmer that set up the computer to respond in a certain way to your input so we're going to describe the different computer operating systems um, the uh, operating systems are the basic set of instructions to the computer on how to handle basic functions controls flow of operations the timing ta of tasks contained in the read-only memory the ROM of the computer uh, it doesn't require power to run its content it allows the computer to start so if you turn on a computer and the operating system is broken uh, it will give you error messages and nothing will happen except these error messages that come up and tell you there's something screwed up with the operating system this can happen to a computer and when it does uh, the computer won't boot up it doesn't mean you can't get the data off the computer because you could take the hard drive out of the computer put it in a USB external shell plug it in as a USB hard drive externally and then plug it into a different computer boot that computer up and get the data off of that hard drive where the operating systems messed up the data didn't get messed up but the operating system did uh, type of computers PC Apple uh, are the two basic uh, computer systems you can get uh, and that will determine the operating system for PCs. You cannot put an Apple operating system on a, a PC or a IBM compatible computer, but you can put Windows operating system on an Apple computer and run the Apple computer just like you would a Windows computer. You can't do it with a uh, typical Dell or uh, HP computer. They will not run the Apple software or the Apple operating system. Uh, PCs, Apple, and Linux operating systems. Uh, Linux is an operating system provided without license. It's royalty free, and a lot of companies in Europe use it. Not many companies in the United States, large corporations or law firms, use Linux. Um, not many use the Mac operating system. Most use Microsoft Windows, 
Um, and then the graphical or GUI, graphical user interface, most people now use a mouse and click on icons to get things working. Uh, but uh, in the previous era, it was um, all menu driven with uh, keystrokes and not using a mouse at all. Those days are gone. Uh, mobile operating systems um, are a little different. They go on um, the tablets, they go on uh, uh, some of the Windows uh, tablets, and also the iOS uh, proprietary, operating, proprietary operating system for Apple iPhones and iPads. And these operating systems get updated from time to time, and uh, if you're using those, you need to keep in uh, touch with those who provide the updates so that your uh, device is... Um, capable of running some of the newer software op uh, op offering. 3.3 uh, explain the differences between general and applications and specialty application software. Um, there's utility software. You know, like Word is a basic um, operating, a basic program that you can use across the board in just about any business, law firms as well as in banks and so on use Word you know, word processors or spreadsheets. But then there's utility software. These are programs that perform special functions in the background related to the um, enhanced use of a computer in a particular environment. Um, so for example, antivirus software as Norton's, um, a document reviewing software like Adobe Acrobat or Adobe Reader, audio visual players um, such as QuickTime, zipping programs, compressing files, you can attach them in email, automatic backup programs um, that are different for a law firm sometimes than they are for other businesses, enhanced, uh, oh by the way, the reason why some of the automatic backup programs and law firms are different is because of e-discovery. Um, the um, attorneys uh, need to make sure that if there's litigation, they have backed up their system properly in the case of uh, litigation. We'll be talking more about that when we get to the e-discovery chapter. Uh, enhanced security, such as firewalls, are very important in the legal environment, and that is uh, software. Firewalls is a software program you put on a system to keep intruders from getting in, hacking into the system. Uh, blocking programs for ethical walls. In other words, you uh, do not allow in a law firm, people to visit certain websites, and there's blocking programs that will prevent that from happening. Uh, application software is a, is a more general kind of a software, like I said, word processing, internet browsers, spreadsheets. Uh, these are used across the board with more than just one, and they're not focused in on one particular uh, practice, some business, uh, uh, business practice. Uh, they can be used by, like I said, banks, schools, law firms, word processors, spreadsheets, etc. Uh, the applications that are unique to law firms uh, we'll be talking about like trial director, case, um, uh, case manager programs uh, like Abacus Law, e-discovery programs like Relativity. We'll be talking about these as we go along. And they're unique to the uh, legal environment. Um, integration of software means that um, one particular program like Word can take its data and put it into another program like PowerPoint uh, so you don't have to retype all the information uh, and that's essentially what we'll be working with and showing how to integrate various programs um, in the legal environment. Suites of compatible software um, where you want to integrate the data. This is a listing of them. Um, one of the programs listed here, um, Quattro Pro, is a spreadsheet program, and you can put data from that spreadsheet program into Excel and go back and forth between the two. The data uh, can be converted. Um, same with Access and Paradox databases, PowerPoint and Presentation X3. Um, graphic programs like Visio can export their data into Presentation Graphics X3 programs. And there's other a software that is compatible. Um, Microsoft is a primary software manufacturer for most uh, companies, but Corel and WordPerfect are other programs that um, are produced by other companies that are used in smaller law offices and not so much uh, across the board in all uh, various kinds of companies, but specialty software uh, for their in, um, environments. 
Uh, specialty applications, industry-specific programs created to perform functions for a specific need within a profession. Like I mentioned, uh, we'll be talking about trial director, uh, we'll be talking about relativity, abacus law. These are specialty applications that we'll be going over. 3.4, purpose of this chapter, understand basic rules in installing um, and uh, using software. Uh, check for the software requirements. It's usually on the box. It tells you what you know requirements you need before you purchase software or try to run it on your computer. Uh, what kind of operating system is you know, best suited for that uh, particular software. Some software will not run on Apple computers, for example. So you'd have a problem if you didn't have the Windows environment installed on the Apple computer, which is possible, but you'd have to do that. Most software is formatted for automatic installation. You insert a CD or you download the program and it will automatically install. Uh, there are license issues. You need to pay particular attention to this. If you're asked to install software and it warns you that you don't have a license uh, for only so many computers and you know you're doing it, uh, say you have licenses for five people but you're doing it on a sixth computer, you might get a warning and you have to be careful about that, and especially in the legal environment, but ethically in any environment, you want to pay those who produce the programs for their labor. Uh, demo versions and shareware or freeware. We'll be using a lot of this in our uh, course of study. You get the sense of uh, how to use the software, you learn how to use it without paying for it, and there are a lot of videos we're going to be watching um, as well and you'll be grabbing screenshots out of the video, putting them in a PowerPoint, and actually be able to teach people how to use software that you've never really used. Um, and this can be really handy for paralegals uh, who are asked to uh, uh, teach a program or learn a program that they've never seen before. You can do this ahead of time, looking at the videos provided at YouTube or on that particular software company's websites. Uh, installing an antivirus program. Usually when you install a software program, you have to turn off the um, uh, antivirus software. It may not allow you to. And sometimes if you're in a law office, uh, you'd have to talk with the IT department about that. Um, you have to understand, this is 3.5, understand how a network functions and the issues involved with network security. Um, group of computer uh, workstations connected to the exchange and or sharing of data. Um, a network file server, a separate computer that controls the flow of information over the network, and it serves files. That's why it's called that. Your files in a network environment um, are usually stored not on your pers personal computer, the one workstation you, you're using, but on the file server so that server can be backed up. Um, connections. Uh, a way in which workstations like servers and other peripheral devices are joined to the network. What kind of connections are there? Wireless and wired. So you might have a wireless card in your laptop or your workstation and it goes out and finds a signal being sent by the server and then you connect that way. Uh, or you might have a wire, it's called an RJ45 cable, plugged into your workstation or your laptop that goes into the wall, that wire goes to the a wiring network and that's plugged into the server. Those are usually faster connections. Local area and wide area networks, uh, LANs and WANs, um, you know the local area network is just serving a local area like an office, a home, building, or a group of buildings. The wide area network uh, goes over a wide geographic area, maybe even over the whole world. Uh, it's connected usually through the internet. Um, and uh, there can be a wireless network, like I said, uh, where you uh, connect with a radio signal or you um, have wired hotspots where you could go to like a Starbucks or something like that and connect uh, to uh, your home network as well. Uh, then computer and network security issues. A single computer security issues are related to the installing corrupted software or accessing something from the internet that has a virus. A virus is a program that's been designed by a programmer to hurt your computer, to steal information from it, and that is uh, very serious in the law office environment. So uh, listen to your IT people about installing software from the internet that might contain a virus or something called the Trojan horse. A Trojan horse looks like a good program. 
it installed, you can use it, everything seems to be working fine, but behind the scenes it's stealing information off of your computer. Um, and keep, be careful of these. Network rights and privileges are assigned by a network administrator um, and you need to abide by the rules that are set forth. Passwords. Usually uh, passwords um, require you to use capital letters, small letters, sometimes special characters, and they have to be a certain length to be secured because there are password breaking uh, programs that go out and try to uh, shoot lots of passwords at a system to get through it. And so the more complicated uh, and the longer a password is, the more difficult it is for a hacker to break into a system. Unauthorized network access. Uh, these are people are called hackers. And uh, again, they're trying to steal information to make money or to uh, help win a case. Hackers especially are dangerous in the legal environment where they are trying to get information about where what your attorneys are thinking about and you really want to avoid um, any possibility of compromising a system and allowing these hackers to get in. Firewalls are designed to try to prevent this but um, it's a two-edged sword because not only prevents hackers to the network but it may also prevent authorized users who are working at an off-site location. So if you're going to work at an off-site like location you need to talk to your IT people about how do I get into the system from the off-site location and make sure that you know the procedure. Um, and computer virus is an antivirus software. I've kind of talked about this already, uh, but um, a virus, again, is not some kind of sickness a computer gets, but a program written by people who are intent on breaking the law, stealing uh, secured information uh, for profit or to win a case. Uh, so be careful of uh, following the rules that are set forward by your uh, IT people. Creating a copy of data is a precaution. Now, if you're working at home, you're working on a laptop computer, you're not saving your information frequently uh, to the hard drive of the computer, and even if you save it to the hard drive of the computer frequently, you don't have, say, a USB stick stuck into it and you make a second copy to the USB stick, you can almost guarantee in the future you're going to lose the data the hard drive will break down um, and you won't have a backup. So do make sure you make a, a second copy of all the data you're, you're working with when you're in standalone mode and you're not saving to a file server. Uh, so these are the purposes so far we've covered. We've discussed the different types of computer systems in the law office. Particularly I mentioned that you can run Windows operating system on an Apple computer and thereby be able to use all the Windows software you know, that is used in a legal environment on your Macintosh computer. Um, we've also described the different computing operating systems, Linux, Windows, uh, the iOS of uh, Apple. Uh, we've explained the difference between general applications and specialty application software. And we've gone through the understanding of the basic rules and in installing software and understand how a network functions and the issues involved with network security.